Hello everyone, it is me, Bryson P, and today we are going to be reacting to the two most popular videos on the Bastoy prison in Norway. Hopefully I pronounced that good enough or at least correct. If not, I apologize. I am a convicted felon in the state of Kentucky in the United States. I was sentenced to seven years in prison with the state of Kentucky opposing probation. However, I was able to turn that into only 83 days in the felon side of the county jail awaiting transfer to prison. And then from there, <clears throat> into five years of probation. That five years probation turning into only two and a half years before being terminated early. I did all of that while also having very similar charges from years prior successfully regained my life and continuing to take back my life and take back control. So, <clears throat> let's just get straight into this and enjoy. There's a no shoes policy. No shoes policy. So I have to put on some slippers because we like to keep it clean. Okay. Yeah. Can you show me around? Yeah, of course. What, what do you like about this house? I love my grill. It felt like we were visiting somebody's house for the first time and they were excited to show us around. So this is your room? This is my room. <laughs> Oh, my bad. Wow. It's big. Yeah. Got your TV. TV. Yeah. DVD. Yeah. Computer. Closet. Looks a whole lot like my room. Got a TV. Got a desk. Got computer. I mean, already. I mean, looks just like my house. I don't have a house, though. I live in a garage. I seriously live in a garage. For real. <sighs> Clothes, I have my own sheets, everything, you know. How is the bed? Comfortable? Yeah, the bed is comfortable. Sit. Yeah. 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 Nike shoes. It's like a college dorm. Except it's Yeah, it not. is like a college dorm. This is a minimum security prison in Norway called Bolstoy, where Dardan Bol is Bolstoy. serving a one-year sentence for drug trafficking. I have my washing machine, my dryer, and I have my shower. Brand new. Boom. So these are heated floors. Are, these are heated floors. <laughs> you don't see that in most prisons. Oh, I know. How do you think Americans will react when they see this prison? They're going to think we're crazy here in Norway. Why? You guys have another, another view on prison. Yep. You, you're like really punishing these people. It's like they're animals. Yes, and I've said that already just in previous videos before before this one that they are treating people like animals that they treat us like animals and i essentially refer to it multiple times like a zoo because here in the united states we are treated like animals we're treated like wild locked up caged animals like a zoo and we have a different view and it's unfortunate north dakota has been implementing some of norway's principles which boasts one of the lowest recidivism rates in the world while the United States has one of the highest rates of people cycling in and out of prison. In Norway, prisoners have keys to their own bedrooms, fully furnished living rooms and kitchens with sharp... That food looks really good. ...sharp knives to cook with. There's five-star cooking classes, painting, and they even have a fully equipped recording studio. <clears throat> You're giving them a outlet versus, again, locking them away for hours at a time a day or putting them confined in a little space with little to no freedom. You have no expression. You have no outlet. You have no way <clears throat> of finding different ways to get out that aggression or to get out, you know, someone goes in here. I'm going to make this my own example, right? So you go in here for, let's say, a year and a half or something like that for drugs. And you have always enjoyed music. You've always wanted to make music. Well, while you're here, you are able to meet other people who have a passion for music. You learn music and you become better at music, which then becomes your new passion. So whenever you get out, you're no longer addicted to drugs because you've been away from drugs for that year, year and a half sentence. So not only have you been clean, but also you now have a outlet, an outlet that is also a passion. So instead of using drugs, you're now able to go home and not get high because your high is playing 
the guitar or playing the drums or learning a new song or playing with your new band. That's what I get out of this and essentially how I would perceive it. And that's what, I mean, you got to have an outlet. Idle hands are a devil's playground, as they always say. Feel like this is prison? Your freedom is taken from you, you know, you cannot go to the store, you cannot see your children when you want. Of course, I'm still in prison. We want them to have a normal life. We punish them by taking away their freedom, but we don't take away their life. In Norway, there's no such thing as a lifetime sentence, so they believe prison should look and feel like everyday life. The prison system isn't there to inflict pain um, and, and be punitive, but is to actually try to get that person to be a better citizen. Prison needs to be an uncomfortable situation. Inmates are in prison as a punishment. Sam Mitchum worked as a corrections officer for years, most recently at North Dakota's maximum security prison. He says adapting Norway principles to U.S. prisons won't work. Woo! Their country is not that big. They don't have the predatory instincts like the criminals here do. They don't have the gang problems. They don't have the drug problems. Norway has murderers. They have criminals, mm -hmm. drug dealers. Mm -hmm. But you don't think it can work here? I don't. I think the, the way that they were brought up there, their way of thinking, is not the way the criminal element here thinks. Okay, hang on now. So basically what you're saying is the way that they were brought up and the way that they're thinking, the, I'm sorry, the way that you're brought up and the way that you're thinking is <clears throat> is not the way that we're brought up and the way that our thinking is. Okay, let's say that that's correct. So you're telling me you can't fix that? You're telling me that we can't start to create a generation of change? We, start, can't, we can't begin to create a generation that has a different outlook and a different perception. Look at me. All right, I'm 29 years old. I have children. Do you think I'm not going to... I mean... You're saying that you can't, you can't have different views. You can't change. Okay, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take many, 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 many years. And it's going to be something that we'd struggle with for a long time. But to say that we can't implement a lot of changes, yeah, we have a much bigger prison population. We have a lot more people. We have a lot da 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 da. Yes, but when you whenever you lower the amount of people coming back in, okay, because it's no longer a revolving door, right? You don't have eighty ninety percent coming right back around then you have lower people coming in. Or we change the way that this is because we don't have as many for drugs coming into the prison because we change the way that we structure our drugs as far as how the laws are. You know, we, we change the men, men, mental health aspect. We work on certain things. And to say that, that that's not going to work and that that's, it might not work perfectly because just on... A grand scale but to say that we can't implement some of these changes and that we can't make life better that's just that's just a load of crap if you ask me that's coming from a convicted felon it's too soon to tell if the norway changes are working to bring down north dakota's recidivism rate the new data won't be available until 2020 or later all right, well, there was the short 3 minute and 35 version of the Welcome to Prison documentary from CNN, the first most popular video on YouTube about this prison. So, let's jump into the next one. The United States has more than 2.2 million adults locked up in its prisons and jails. That's only slightly smaller than the population of Houston, America's fourth largest city. Many of the inmates are repeat offenders, which raises the age-old question of what we want out of incarceration, punishment, or rehabilitation so prisoners do not return. One Scandinavian country is using a unique approach to achieve the latter. As part of our week-long series here at NBC News looking at criminal justice reform, Kelly Kobiea travels to Norway for our Sunday Spotlight. 
in this vast forest of pine and blueberry is what some call the world's most humane prison, Halden Prison, where new inmates are greeted the way I was, with a handshake. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Drug smugglers, murderers, rapists. We've seen all this doing one. Time in We've a met this guy. Security prison this guy's really cool. I like, like him. A college campus. This is home? Yeah, this is home, yeah. Karsten was convicted of killing a man in Brazil. This is his cell block with a full kitchen, big screen TV, laundry room. You have a key to your own cell. Yeah, everybody has their own key. He and the rest of the prisoners are locked in overnight. The rest of the time, they choose when to lock the door to their cozy single bed cells with a TV and a private bathroom. I used to be in a prison in Brazil and there was a cell just a little bit bigger than this. And there used to be 15 people in the same room. The point here yeah. to turn... Yeah, I've seen videos like the uh, Locked Up Abroad. Have you ever seen that TV show? I've seen some crazy episodes on that. That ain't no joke there. Locked Up Abroad. Mm. But that's really cool that this guy, you know, can be as humble and as... as humanely treated. And You see how he treats you with respect just like you're treating him with respect? Goes a long way even though he's you know what killed a man doesn't mean that he deserves to be destroyed as a human being and criminals into good neighbors always have coffee on the go thank you rehabilitation says the prison governor starts on day one we take the freedom from them but uh, when they are here we try to help them to get a better citizens. Inmates have a normal work week, giving them routine and responsibilities, training to be car mechanics and graphic designers in a state-of-the-art studio. From the city hall, we're getting jobs for the, from them. Learning skills like restaurant prep, where they're trusted to handle knives, can help them get jobs on the outside. They have weekends off and a house available for overnight visits with their families. Welcome to uh, Criminal Records. <laughs> Richard is studying music. He's doing time for murder and served his first four years in a Swedish prison. I was very hateful myself when I came here, you know, because I come from a very, very hard prison system. They really, really hate the guards and the guard hate, hated us. Do I feel like a, pr a different person now? Yeah, I do. Here, guards and tutors work side by side with inmates, <laughs> playing chess or simply going for a walk. It's all about building relationships and trust. Man, I can only imagine how some of the people here in the United States would feel about this, though. The amount of backlash that families would have over this because they would feel that this is an injustice, right? And something that I read in a comment is that you know we're here to serve justice but not you know not to harm people not to you know to hurt someone and all that you know you serve justice and things like that but that doesn't mean you gotta you know that doesn't mean like i've said in a bunch of videos you don't strip them of everything and just treat them like a locked up wild cage animal but again a lot of people feel that you know you've committed a murder you've killed somebody so therefore you should be killed or therefore you know, you should live the rest of your life in prison, never having a chance to ever get out, and you live that entire life pretty much in solitary confinement or living your whole life fighting, literally, phys physically fighting, and then also figuratively. And that's what they want. They see that, you know, the harsher the punishment and the more that you are punished, the better that they feel. And that's just not... That's just not the way that it needs to be. It's not the way that it needs to be. And it goes back to the previous video that we just watched. That North Dakota prison guard basically said that we don't have the mentality for that. That we're not capable of learning and teaching our generations forward how to treat people with humanity. How to have dignity. How to understand that there's maybe a more underlying issue than just that this person's a psychopathic killer and that they were born a killer and they have to be, you know, locked away from society for the rest of their lives and treated like some bizarre, crazed, possessed person. I mean, come on. <laughs> 
But that's how we treat people in the United States. That is how we treat people. Unfortunately. Even with the prison boss. He looks so happy. It's an inmate who painted it. There are cameras and locks, but no weapons. And nearly half of the guards are women. But do you feel safe? Yes, I do. Why? Well, I mean, we, we get to know all the prisoners pretty well. We interact, but we're, we're with them all the time. Norway's model isn't cheap. $93,000 per inmate per year, three times more than in the U.S. But only 20% of inmates reoffend after two years. In the U.S., it's 60%. There's no death penalty, and life sentences were banned in 1981. Even mass murderer Andres Brevet, who killed 77 people in a 2011 attack, was given a maximum sentence of 21 years, though that is extendable. Conservative critics say Norway has gone too far. What about the victims who actually has this um, uh, feel really in, in, in injustice that the people who commit this crime can actually live in this luxury. But if someone were to say to you, wow, this looks like a pretty luxurious lifestyle. Most of us uh, aren't going to see it outside for a long time, outside the world. But these men admit they've been helped here. Before I uh, think more like a criminal, but uh, now I start to think more like a normal guy, you know? If you treat an inmate uh, like an animal, he'd be an animal. If you treat an uh, inmate with respect, he respects you back. He is a human being. Yeah, we treat them like human beings. Lessons many here believe could extend beyond these prison walls. For Sunday Today, Kelly Kobiella hauled in prison, Norway. Kelly, thank you very much. You can see more in-depth So, <clears throat> that's the end of that one. That wasn't um, Bastoy, Bastoy Prison, but... We're going to talk about both since I've made videos on both here, okay? And we're going to talk about the fact that they asked, you know, that that you feel like you get it pretty good here. You do get it pretty good there compared to other prisons, okay? And even one guy acknowledged, you know, he went there from a Sweden prison that was very hard. And he's become a lot calmer and has come a long way himself being at that prison, okay? Yes, it is a luxury prison, and yes, compared to other prisons, it is a cakewalk. But until you've been to prison or until you've been incarcerated for a long amount of time or something like that, or you've had those types of things really stripped away from you, you don't understand. Just like until you've had a family member killed, murdered, or raped or something like that you don't you can't understand you can't go inside and feel those feelings and those thoughts and understand how that person has processed that situation of their best friend or their daughter or their husband or whatever mom being killed or being whatever whatever you want to make up right you can't go in that person's head and process the justice that you feel would be right or adequate to that to that person who committed the offense, right? <clears throat> Just like you can't go inside that person's thoughts and that person's feelings on who did it, why they did it, and everything behind it. Just like you can't go inside that person's thoughts, feelings, whatever that's been in prison and has experienced prison or jail or any type of incarceration. And you can't go through that and say, well, because... Because that's not the way you feel about it. That's not the way you view it. And that's not the type of punishment you feel is acceptable. Again, doesn't make it justifiable. These people are going to have to be your neighbor, be your co-worker eventually. It might be 15 years down the road, but 15 years down the road they will be. And again, who would you rather that person be? The person who has spent 15 years rehabilitating and learning that there is a different life outside of what I've known or someone who has lived a life of a certain variety and then has continued to have to live that same variety of lifestyle for 15 years and then get out and have no other type of skills or workability. I mean, that's kind of a, a, a no-brainer. But at the same time... What time is it? Okay, I got time. But at the same time... Apparently, 
we're not capable of thinking that way. We're not capable of that that style of critical thinking. I don't know. If you've been to jail or prison, you've experienced it, let me know in the comments section. I'd love to know your thoughts, your feelings on it, and how you would feel from your experience locked away, incarcerated, or whatever, to how you would feel here, or if you believe that that's an injustice or a proper punishment. Again, I'm Bryson P, and I appreciate you for watching this video. Drop a like if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. Or a comment if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. And subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. Also, I just appreciate whatever you do, especially for watching this and making it this far into the video. Have a good day, and you're awesome.